The theme now is the destructiveness of sins and how to overcome sins. So um, uh, this is important that we understand how destructive sins are so that we uh, don't fall into sins. Uh, we, if we want to make the best of our life, that is very important for us to understand the destructiveness of sin and how important it is for us to obey God uh, totally. The Bible has serious warnings about sins. Galatians 6, 8, For he who sows to the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. So when a person sows to his flesh, sows to his sinful nature, he will reap corruption or destruction, that he will bring in destruction to his life. It will destroy different parts of his life. And John 5, 14, Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. So Jesus said to the man who was healed with, uh, of uh, 38 years of sickness, and then he said, stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. That means that if he continues sin, something worse will happen to him. So it's very important that he understand that and that he will stop sinning. Matthew 25, 45, Inasmuch as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me and this will go away into everlasting punishment. So for Christians, I mean so-called Christians, they, if they go to hell, they're not Christians. So-called Christians, they're in the church, but they did not do the good things to the little ones, that they do not serve God, to, they do not bless other Christians. Uh, that in Matthew 25, the third parable about the sheep and the goats, the sheep are the ones who do, you know, give water, give food and clothing and visit and help. Uh, of course, it would include also evangelism because that's the Great Commission to tell people about Jesus and also uh, help people to love God more, to obey God more. Now, if Christians, uh, so-called Christians, never do this at all, they don't want to do it, they can have, you know, they can end up in hell. And they will be very surprised that one day they end up in hell. They thought they can go to heaven. God's grace should be the main motivation. God's law should be a secondary motivation or reminder. Now these are secondary motivation, reminder, warning to us that if we sin, that we, you know, we can f uh, have destruction and uh, different things that uh, happen to our life. And so we understand this, but it should not be the main motivation. The reason is, Christians should be motivated by God's grace and God's love. That we are motivated, I want to serve God, I want to serve God. Uh, I want to uh, uh, glorify God. I, you know, that Christians should be motivated to do that, to obey God. And not, uh, Christians should not be, could, could not, should not be, Christians should not be, you know, um, lazy and, 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 and wanting to sin all the time. They should be, you know, uh, loving God and obeying God, knowing that when we obey God, God will bless us. So the motivation should come from grace. God is giving us strength to obey Him. He gives us uh, spiritual gifts uh, to serve Him. He gives us uh, uh, the love and the fruit of the Holy Spirit so that we can live out God's nature. So this uh, should be the motivation and also God will reward us. Now this should be a secondary reminder that if we sin we can fall into that, uh, uh, that we can bring in more destruction. Now if I describe this, this is grace, okay? This is, this is grace. Grace should be the greatest motivation and then this is the law, the warning. The warning should be the, you know, should be just a slight reminder. Christians should, should not be living like this and say, oh, if I sin, I'll face destruction. You know, it, they should be seeing that God is good and so they should be motivated by God's grace. Now, if a Christian continues to sin, then he should have more warning. Then he should receive more warning. But if we understand that, if we sin, it's really destructive to us. For instance, you know, uh, some people, they have, you know, they are controlled by lust. When they're controlled by lust, they understand that this is really bad for them. It would destroy the family, destroy their 
reputation, destroy their ministry, destroy their life, destroy the plan of God for their lives. And so they understand that then they should obey God and love God and live in holiness instead of living in sin. And if they continue to live in sin, they, you know, they, they need the, uh, the warning and the reminder. But it should not be the main, main uh, uh, motivation. If, he, if it's the main motivation, that means he's constantly, you know, he's sinning and, and he's, he needs to be threatened by the law of God then it's not a pleasant Christian life. But if we say, I'm living in the love of God, I'm obeying Him, I obey Him willingly, and I'm happy to obey Him, and I enjoy obeying Him. This way, we'll have strength, we'll have joy, we enjoy serving God, we enjoy uh, living in holiness. So I hope that the main motivation should be God's grace uh, and not uh, the warning from the law. Okay, and then also another warning, do not give the devil a foothold. Ephesians 4.26, in your anger do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. So, uh, in the anger do not sin. So, don't, you know, let sin take over you. And then it says do not give the devil a foothold. So, it would mean that sinning would give the devil a foothold. That a place for the devil to step into our life. So we should understand that any sin will give the devil a foothold to step into our life. And when he comes, he will come to steal, kill, and destroy. He will steal everything we have. He can steal our health, our strength, our reputation, our opportunity to serve God, our family, our church, our ministry. He can steal everything. And he can kill us spiritually. He can destroy us. So we want to say, Lord, I want to follow you. I want to love you. I want to obey you. I don't want to let Satan come into my life to steal from me. Now for myself, I want to live in holiness all the time. So I won't be saying, oh, uh, 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 I, I cannot sin. If I sin, the devil will steal from me. That, it's just a, a small reminder in my heart. I know that if I sin, it will bring uh, Satan to come into my life but because I already am motivated to love God to obey God and I want to make the best of my life so I don't need to constantly hammer myself and say if I sin Satan will come to steal from me because I already know that I and I I want to live in the goodness of God so I hope that all Christians who hear this message will be saying I want to live in God's love and God's blessings. He will, he will bless my whole life. My whole life will be blessed, blessed by God. And I, I will, you know, He will bless my, my life, my, uh, give me more joy, more strength. He will bless my family, bless my church, bless my ministry, give me spiritual gifts, give me opportunities, provide for me and everything I need. And we should not be tempted, you know, whenever any sin sinful thought come, we should stop it right away. We understand that that will cause Satan to come to steal from me. So, so then the main motivation should be the grace of God. That is a healthy Christian life. If a Christian just, you know, ham is just hammering himself, then he is, you know, he is not really living in joy and he is, he is you know, he is sinning and he is suffering from the consequence of the sin. Okay, sin can destroy our relationship with God and relationship with people. When we have, you know, when God doesn't trust us, when there is not a good relationship with God, God is a source of all goodness. We must understand this. All the good things we have comes from God. If God takes away any blessings from us, it's unbearable. Even the smallest, the, your small finger, if we lose the small finger, or we lose sleep, we lose the health of our body, it's painful. Because all good things come from God. And we need God to sustain our life. So if we lose the blessings of God, we can lose health and, and joy and strength. So we don't want to 
you know, we don't want to ruin the relationship with God. So we understand that sin can destroy the relationship with God, and that will bring all kinds of destruction. And sin will destroy the relationship with people. And then when people don't trust us, then we cannot serve God well, and we cannot do things well uh, for God. So we, we must understand that every, every sin must have a consequence. And then three, it will destroy our marriage, our job, our ministry, our reputation. And sometimes destroying the reputation, sometimes it's hard to restore. I have known three pastors personally who sinned, and uh, two of them were put in jail. Uh, one of uh, the other one, uh, his uh, adultery was put on newspaper even though he was not put in prison because uh, the woman uh, has had sex with him willfully. So it's not a crime, but it's a sin. And, uh, and the other two pastors, you know, that their ministry is greatly influenced and destroyed. So we must understand that uh, if we lose our reputation, it's very hard to pick it up again. It's very hard to pick it up again. So we must understand this and don't let anything steal from us. And our future and our whole life, our future, what is going to happen to us? Now, not just for minister, for anyone. If he is, you know, he has the reputation of flirting with girls, it would affect his future. His wife would not have, uh, would not trust him. So it will affect his rep reputation, affect his whole life. And God's plan for his life, then, then it's hard for him to enter God's perfect plan. And then the worst scenario is that he can lose uh, eternal life. And sometimes there's no turning back when we sin. Now, what I mean is that destruction is so serious. For some people, uh, they sin and then they could lose, totally lose their reputation, lose their ministry, uh, lose the future, they could be living in terrible situation. When I was in the seminary, uh, a seminary professor told us that. He has visited seminary students who graduated and became pastors, and then they got into, uh, they became alcoholics, and they were out of control. And then they lose the family because when they, when they uh, drink too much, they, you know, the, the relationship with the family is affected. And then they lose the family, they lose the ministry, and they became homeless. And the uh, professor told us that it was sad to see pastors became homeless. And it's hard for him to turn back. It's hard for him to pick up his life again. So, or if a person is put in jail for many years, it's hard for him to pick up again. So it's very important to understand that uh, some people keep sinning. There could be a point there is no turning back at all. So we want to keep the blessings of God. God has prepared so many good things for us. So we want to, don't want to lose the good things. Okay, A person sinning without repentance can lose his salvation. In Galatians 5, 19-21, now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, reveries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in, the, in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. That means if people continue to sin like this and don't repent, that they can lose salvation, that they cannot inherit the kingdom of God. And some Christians, they are controlled by this. They're controlled by fornication or lewdness, which is like, uh, you know, falling into sexual sins and uh, hatred of someone contentions, fighting with people, jealousies of other people, and wrath, anger, and selfish ambitions. They just want more power, more money. 
dissensions causing the church to, to divide and envy of people and drunkenness and uh, you know reveries means that like uh, just having feasts just having party times all the time uncontrollable then they can they will not inherit the kingdom of God so it's possible for people to lose salvation so we understand that the worst scenario is that if a person doesn't repent he can lose salvation now what if a person continues sin and then they repent and then the next day they sin again now this is not real repentance for instance if someone continue to watch pornography now he thinks that no one sees him but God doesn't like that. God is not pleased with him. He will lose, start to lose the blessings of God. And also his spiritual life will be affected. He will not have strength. He will not have joy. He will have no motivation because it would destroy his motivation to serve God. It would destroy his life. That, so it's not, some people think it's fun to sin, but it's not because the consequences are serious. Actually, sins are like baits. They are like candies that are destructive, that are poisonous. When you take it, it's sweet, but it will destroy people. So we, when we understand this, we say, I don't want to sin anymore. I want to keep the blessings of God, and actually I want more and more blessings of God. I want to go higher and higher in my life so that I can enter God's perfect plan. So I hope that we all have this heart. I thank God, you know, when I am uh, filled with the Holy Spirit, when I was filled with the Holy Spirit, I was changed by God. And my first change was I, I built up a strong relationship with God and I take care of my sins. In the past, I sometimes I did not, you know, watch carefully and then I let sin continue to stay in my life. And I continue to repent of my sins and turn away from my sin and hate my sins because I know that they would destroy my life after I was filled with the Holy Spirit. I have a much stronger motivation to turn away from sin. And then God gave me the, uh, actually a period of time of training that it's a time of prayer, a time of uh, building up my life that, uh, that God prepared me and then after the period of time, God gave me more and more teachings. How to handle my problems, how to help other people to handle the problems, how to build up spiritual life, how to teach, how to uh, have ways to overcome sins, overcome unforgiveness, overcome sexual sins, and also how to have wisdom to teach. And I thank God that He gave me teachings that are very practical, that, are, that people can put into practice easily and in a practical way and they find that it's very helpful so i thank god for that i thank god lord i thank you thank you thank you that you have given me given me this wisdom and then he gave me the motivation to serve god that i went i have gone to 15 countries to do mission work and i will i have already started to do mission work now and then i will uh you know i have teachings online and also in different places that uh, I've written uh, a book and also written different documents. So God has given me ways to open up my way so that I can serve God more and I have uh, and gone into a higher level of ministry that God has put me into His, His will and I want to enter a more and more perfect will of God and I don't want anything to destroy that. So that's why I said that the grace of God should be the main motivation. That we should be saying, oh, God has prepared so many things for me. I want to really live in Him. I want to enjoy Him. I want to be motivated to serve God and go higher and higher. Now, I have all these teachings you can watch again on YouTube. That you can learn all these teachings and you can teach other people. And then it will help other people to grow. To grow strong and then your ministry can grow strong and then you can help other churches and you can do mission work so you can do different things to enter a more perfect will of God so when you understand that then you say I don't want to sin I don't want to fall into any kind of sin because it would cause the devil to come to destroy and steal now I just use myself as an illustration if I let you know 
if I let anger control me? And then people will say, well, Pastor Yip teaches us to, uh, to be peaceful and to be kind and meek, uh, to be nice to people, but he himself has anger. And then it would destroy my reputation. So, so we want to say, Lord, please help me that I don't want to be controlled by anger. I don't want to be controlled by lust or any, any sin. So I hope that we all treasure our life. Now, with this teaching, your life can all go very high. And you will receive the blessings of God. You can go very high and bless your countries. So I hope you all will hunger for that. Okay, now the worst scenario is that God can execute judgment when we sin. That Ananias and his wife, Sapphira. Now Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself? You have not lied to men, but to God. Then Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and breathed his last. So great fear came upon all those who heard those things, these things. So God can strike a person, cause him to die instantly. Now God hasn't caused us to die instantly now because of grace, but it doesn't mean that we can continue sin without consequences. So we need to understand that, yes, there are serious consequences of sin. The worst of it is that we can die and lose salvation. Okay, now we talk about how to overcome sins. First, the motivation to overcome sins and obey God. Okay, these four points, I hope you remember. Now, I thank God that He has given me uh, points, ways to teach people. And this is one way that God has taught me, the four points of motivation. So I hope you remember this. First, God loves us greatly. And also I should add that He is also almighty. And He is full of love and He is almighty. And we are very precious in God's sight. And third, when we overcome sins and obey God, and then um, when we serve God, when we love God, we bless other people to obey God and have a good relationship with Him. Do and, you know, everything right. We will be greatly blessed by God and our lives will go to a high level. And then, four, if we sin, there will be great destruction to our lives. We can lose God's plan and even our salvation. So when we sin and when we you know, don't follow God, don't pursue the perfect plan of God, we can lose salvation. So these four points can apply to anything, like building up a marriage. That God loves us and is almighty, He can bless us in every way. That we are very precious. And then when we uh, commit to loving our family, loving our family members, then, and also uh, bringing our church members to follow God and love God, then we'll be blessed by God. And then if we don't, if we just yell at our wives, if we commit adultery, if we uh, ruin the family, then great destruction can come to our life. So these four points. Uh, first point should be God is full of love and power. And then second is we are very precious in God's sight. And then when we follow Him, love Him, relax, uh, trust in Him, then we are greatly blessed by Him. And then when we sin and don't have a good relationship with Him, then there will be destruction. So applying to sin, that we understand that when we love God, when we live in holiness, when we follow Him totally, then our whole life will be blessed by God and God is almighty and He is full of love. He has the ability to bless us. And He treasures us. He wants to do great things in our life. And then, but when we sin, Great destruction will come to our life. So when we understand this, then we say, Yes, Lord, I don't want to sin. So this is the motivation for us not to fall into sin. Now, when we sin, first thing we understand is when we sincerely repent of our sins, God will definitely forgive us. First John 1 John 1.9 If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So when we confess our sin and when we have a repentant heart, that He is faithful, He will keep His promise and just. He is just because Jesus Christ has already paid for the price of the forgiveness of the sins. So He is faithful, He will keep His promise and He is just because 
Jesus has already paid for the price of sin, then he can forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So now very often when people sin and then they feel very guilty and then they lose motivation. So we should say, God forgive me. I'm totally forgiven when I repent. And so I can let go of the past. Very important. Let go of the past. Let go of the sin. And I want to start to obey God. But very often many people just continue to feel guilty. They accuse themselves and they continue to feel very guilty and they have no strength. So we want to continue to believe that, yes, when we repent sincerely, He will for sure forgive me and cleanse me from all sins and I, I can be free. I don't have to accuse myself. I don't have to live in guilt. Now, not to live in guilt is very, it's a wonderful gift. I thank God for that, you know. In the past, there were days that I sinned and I, I really felt guilty. And that guilt made me feel very, very bad. That guilt motivates me not to sin anymore. And now, my stronger motivation is that I, you know, that I, I know that God has a wonderful plan for me and God loves me and my life can go higher and higher so I don't want to destroy that life. So I, I make the best of my life with that motivation that I don't let guilt control me at all. And uh, so anytime I have any sinful thought, immediately I take care of that to stop any guilt from attacking me. Psalm 51, 17. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. This, O oh God, you will not despise. So when we have a contrite heart, a really repentant heart, that we're really sorry for my sins, and broken heart, I, you know, I'm broken because of my sins, and God will not despise. So when we are truly sorry for our sins, God is very happy to forgive us. So the repentance doesn't just mean, oh God, forgive me. It means that I'm really sorry for my sins. I'm really sorry that I yelled at that person. I'm really sorry that I had anger. I'm really sorry that I had lust. I'm very sorry that I did not love you uh, with all my heart. Uh, that I'm very sorry that I had depression and, and I, I let myself be stuck in, in uh, negative emotions. So that really saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, this is very terrible. And Lord Jesus, because you died for me on, my, on the cross, please forgive my sins and wash me clean. And then we believe that when I really am I'm sorry for my sins, God will really forgive me and cleanse me from my, from my sins. And I, then I can be free totally. And we are more than conquerors in Jesus Christ. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. So we are more than conquerors with the shield of faith that can st stop the fiery darts from the devil that I have faith that God forgive me God helps me and so any times people attack me people say anything against me or, uh, or the situation is bad or whatever happens that makes me feel unhappy I stop it with the shield of faith I believe that God is for me God helps me God blesses me therefore I don't have to be afraid of anything I don't have to feel guilty, I don't have to feel depressed, I don't have to feel no strength, I can have strength. Mm -hmm.